welcome to the Not Your Average Knits podcast. My name is Kim. Um, this is episode 30, which is pretty cool. Uh, definitely a momentous occasion whenever you kind of hit one of those, you know, round numbers, I guess. Um, welcome to everyone who is new. I know I've had some new subscribers, so thank you so much for finding your way over here and subscribing. Um, and welcome back to anyone who's been watching for a little while or since the very beginning. Um, you can find me on Ravelry as K Brigio. Um, I put all of my projects there and my stash. Um, so if you ever have any questions about anything that I show on the podcast, I haven't been doing show notes for a really long time, but, but you know, most of my projects are up there, which link to all the patterns, um, and all of the yarn and the needles that I use. And I put notes in there. So everything pretty much you can find on my Ravelry page. Um, but as always, if you have any questions about anything that you see, feel free to question below. Um, or message me on Ravelry or Instagram. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as Not Your Average Knits. Uh, and we also have a Ravelry group for the podcast, which is called Not Your Average Knits. Um, I also design some patterns. Um, and anyone who is a loyal watcher and subscriber of the podcast gets a coupon code for 25% off any of my designs um, that are self published, not ones that are kind of published by outside sources, but my self-published designs um, with the coupon KNOT25. Um, so that's all of that stuff, I think. Um, in terms of what's happening, um, I announced a giveaway last episode um, from Knit Crate. So they send me boxes to give my honest review. Um, some I've have made some projects out of some I'm still planning to um, and last month I chose to give away and give back to all of you um, the sock membership crate from Knit Crate uh, for July um, I don't I'll put up a picture I don't have it here with me right now um, so I posted a thread in Ravelry um, I'm actually as I record this I'm leaving that thread up until the end of the day um, so when I edit this tomorrow, um, I will put the winner right below. So congratulations to, to whoever you are. Um, please contact me on Ravelry or Instagram, uh, with your mailing address and I will mail this out to you. So congratulations. Um, and thanks to everyone who participated. Um, I've, like I've said before, I've really been enjoying getting Knit Crate. Um, the themes are different every month. The colorways have been really fun and different and really good patterns and fun sort of extras in some of the memberships. Um, I do have a link below this video um, of how you can link to Knit Crate's website and use the coupon that they provide to me to provide to you um, to get 20% off um, your first month membership or anything in the shop. Um, so that is that. Uh, next, in terms of what is happening, is the Entre Lock Along, um, which I feel like I'm going <laughs> to stumble over every time that I say that. Entre Lock Along. Um, so I'm going to, in a little bit, insert a video here so it will be future me. Um, I'm planning to do kind of like a walkthrough. Um, I created a very small sort of sample piece of Entrelock that has like the main components. Um, it's actually blocking right now um, so that I can kind of point out the different pieces of Entrelock and kind of explain how it works. And then I'm also going to record a little bit of kind of a tutorial of me actually knitting another one of those swatches um, so you can just kind of see how it works and I can kind of walk you through. Um, I've also created a pattern now entrelac is very like once you kind of know how to do it once you know how to do it so you know the only time there's really ever like a different kind of pattern is if someone's doing it as a cowl or doing it where they maybe have increases and decreases i've seen some people use it in a sock so you know if it's not basic and rectangular there might be other patterns out there that have way more complicated entrelac than i know how to do but um i wrote up kind of my regular recipe. Um, I like to do entrelock with DK weight or more. It makes a pretty good size um, item and sort of the squares and rectangles are a good size, which I like. Um, you could also do it in fingering weight and have the squares be, you know, smaller. Um, but anyway, so I wrote up my version of a DK pattern. Um, I haven't yet, but by the time this <laughs> goes on YouTube, I will have posted it uh, on Ravelry. I'm going to sell it, I think, for like a dollar if people are interested, just because I kind of went through the effort to, to write it all up and have it tested and all that kind of stuff. 
Um, but for anyone watching here, I want to offer that to you for free because I want you to participate um, in the Entre Walk Along. And if you have any interest in kind of using DK weight and kind of making a, a scarf or even something small that then you can seam and make like a cowl, um, that works too. Um, so for that, if you find it on Ravelry, I will I'll probably maybe link to the pattern down below this video um, if I can remember to do that, just so you can find it fairly easily and not have to kind of navigate all my designs. Um, but use the coupon code ENTRELOCKALONG um, and that will give you this pattern for free. Um, I'm also, so in terms of kind of being eligible for prizes, and I'll show you those prizes in a minute, um, I'm going to open a thread in the Ravelry group just for kind of chatter and for people to be able to talk about it. Um, and I think, you know, and then you can post pictures and things. What I'm going to do for a prize, anyone's eligible as long as you try it. I think I'm just going to do it for August. I may go into September. I'll kind of see like how many people are participating. Um, but I just want people to try it. So I don't, you know, I, I, I don't want you to feel like you have to finish something. It's not really about that. It's just more about the technique. Um, but what I think I'm going to do to be eligible for prizes is not everyone uses Ravelry or creates project pages. And if you're just playing around, um, I'm going to do this based on hashtags. So hashtags, <laughs> I'm like blanking on <laughs> what they're called hashtags on Ravelry. If you do post it as a project, you know, if it's in progress, whatever is fine. Use the tag on your project page. Um, use the tag entre lock along. Um, I actually looked it up and there's no one that's used that tag so far. Surprise, surprise. Um, so that way, if you tag a project with Entrelock along, I'll be able to find you to make you eligible for a prize um, on there. And um, if you don't use Ravelry, I'm going to also open it up on Instagram. So if you post your project in progress, a picture of it, the yarn that you're using for it, whatever, um, use the hashtag Entrelock along on Instagram. Um, and if you could also use not your average knits, that would be awesome as well. Cause it'll make it super easy for me to find what you're working on. And I want to see what you guys are working on. I think it'll be awesome to see kind of the different yarns that you choose, um, and how you're doing with the, with the technique and projects. Um, okay. So if you have any questions about that, if I didn't make it clear enough, um, let me know, it's just ask me a question. Um, and like I said, I'll open up a chatter thread in Ravelry just so we can chat more about it. So if you have any questions, you can, you can post them there, or as you're doing it, if you have any questions about actually the technique, let me know as well. Um, okay. I want to show you the prizes and then I will insert the video. Um, so first, um, the girls over at, um, beautiful sister, this is their card. I have such problems with focusing. This camera is not the best, but it's Beautiful Sister. Um, you can find them on Etsy, and it's beautiful. And Sister is spelled S-Y-S-T-E-R. They make gorgeous bags. Um, they have an Instagram uh, account as well. Um, I'll try and remember and put their stuff below. So they sent um, a bag for me and then a bag for me to give away or use as a prize. Um, and I'm super excited about this and I hope you guys are too. So I'd seen these when they post them. So this is one of their, they make a few different styles. Um, this is their Hillary style, I believe. So it's a really, really cool carry bag and then it's open on the inside, but then you can use these two flaps to knot and, and tie whatever you have in there. Um, and then there's also a pocket on the inside. Um, and it's just a really good size. It's a little hard to show with the, all the flaps and handles and stuff, but, um, it's a really good size bag. And I just kind of love that it's, it's different and that you can carry it. You can also use it easily as like a yarn bowl, um, you know, like on the couch or wherever you are to have kind of your yarn in. It is nice that there's no zipper or anything for your work to get caught on. Um, and then I love that this pattern also kind of reminds me of Entrelac because Entrelac is kind of all about triangles and rectangles and that kind of stuff. Um, so the winner will get this and also the lovely Melissa of Knitty by Nature. Um, she sent this gorgeous uh, stitch marker and progress keeper set. Super cute owl. I'm not going to take it out of the plastic, but really, really like it. I ordered um, some from her. A while ago, I ordered these really cool kind of, um, they almost look like honeycombs, 
um, just plain old stitch markers. I kind of felt like I just needed some circular ones, so like similar to just the plain ones that are on here. Um, and she also sent, or did I buy, I don't remember, some ones that have like a coffee bean on the end, which of course I love coffee. Um, so anyway, so I bought some from her and she sent this along to give away to you guys. Um, so super cute and it kind of matches the bag, which is nice too. Then I'm also going to contribute from my stash. Um, the yarn that I'll be using um, for the entrelock along, which I think I'll wait and I'll show you during the what I'm doing part, but um, is from Feederbrook Farm. I had been introduced to them um, through Yarnbox. They had had, um, I think it was before I was even a member, but they were selling yarn in Overstock, so I think I bought some from Overstock. Um, and then they actually featured them in another yarn box like a year or so ago. Um, and the yarn I'm using for my scarf for the Entrelock Along, they have a booth at Rhinebeck. So if anyone's going there and likes this yarn, definitely check them out at Rhinebeck. Um, so I bought a couple skeins from them um, then as well. But so I have this one in my stash. This color, this is the label for this one. This colorway is called Strontium. Uh, it's a DK weight. Um, so what's cool about, they do have some yarn that's solid colors, um, but this sort of base um, or the way that they spin this one is called Entropy. So it's, look, you know, it has that, I don't know if they hand spin it or machine spin it or what, but it has that hand spun um, look, which I just love for Entrelock. And I know I've shown you pictures of the different scarves I've done and most of it is in Feederbrook Farms. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to include also in the giveaway this from my stash. Um, so that if you end up liking Entrelock, you can give it a try with this yarn. So anyway, so that is the wonderful package of goodies. Um, I'll get that all in there. Um, oh, and Beautiful Sister had sent me a bag as well, so I just wanted to kind of show that to you. Um, so this is one of their wedge bags, and I just loved kind of the bumblebees and the silvers kind of sparkly. Um, normal zipper clothes, and then has a nice... Um, detachable handle as well and it's also a really good size um, it, it seems kind of small um, but it's really deep and like the bottom is a really good size um, I actually have I was pulling this out to show you and I actually have a whip in it and I probably I don't even know when I started this one so this is the road to Luganza something um, <laughs> shawl um, and I'm doing this in northbound knitting fibers <laughs> I don't know hence why it's a whip because it's been just put away for a little while I love the pattern I absolutely had no problem with it I forget I, maybe I just got super obsessed with weaving or maybe my sweater or something I know I showed you this at one point on a podcast a while ago um, it just kind of has fallen to the wayside, but anyway, it's in here. So now maybe I'll keep it cause I'll keep it out and put it in my regular rotation. Anyway, so beautiful sister. So definitely check them out. They have really, really great bags. Um, okay. So right now I will insert the kind of all about Entrelock video, which will show you my sample, which will walk you through how to do the different steps. Um, and that's that. I will put a timestamp right now. So any of you who are watching who have zero interest whatsoever of trying Entrelac, um, I'll give you a timestamp to kind of fast forward to. So that way you can just kind of get along and move along to, to kind of my regular knitting podcast. Um, so, okay. Insert future me now. Hey everyone. So I'm going to walk you through the components of Entrelac. Um, as a reminder, I did post my recipe up on Ravelry. The pattern is Entrelock DK recipe, um, and you can download it for free with the coupon code Entrelock along. Um, so if you want to follow along, go and grab that right now. Um, so the yarn that I used just for this sample swatch is Knit Picks Gloss DK, which is a merino silk blend, and I used size seven needles. Um, and this is actually a cast on of 30 stitches. Um, so the taupe represents my cast on edge um, and sort of the three triangles on the bottom, which I'll explain in a minute, are essentially kind of 10 um, cast on stitches each. Um, you do need to cast on very loosely. If you can see even from me pulling, 
like that's about as much as it will stretch and you can actually see my cast off edge was a lot looser um, so you do definitely want to cast on um, as loosely as possible so I used three different colors um, the taupe color maroon navy and teal um, just to kind of represent the four key uh, components um, of entrelock so when you actually knit this yourself you don't have to change colors you can if you want um, it you know will obviously leave lots of ends to be woven in if you do it that way um, but like I've said before if you use a really cool either hand spun or gradient or some sort of yarn with long color changes um, you don't really need to stripe it and even in one solid color you'll still get a really pretty you know like basket weave waffle effect like entrelock gives um, so the first component that you see in the taupe, like I said, are the base triangles. Um, so in our pattern, we cast on 30 stitches, and then you follow the directions for the three base triangles. Um, I'll walk you through these steps and then actually knit this, and you can follow along. Then the second component is called uh, Tier 1, and that's represented by the maroon. There's actually three different parts to Tier 1. So there's the left side triangle, two rectangles, and then a right side triangle. Um, the idea would be also if you say wanted to cast on 40, this blocked to about 12 inches wide. Um, if you wanted to cast on 40 and have another base triangle, then you would still have a left side triangle, a right side triangle, but you would actually end up with three rectangles in the middle and you would have to do sort of an extra repeat. Um, so, you know, these components will basically always kind of be the same. Um, so again, so base triangles is the bottom, tier one, which involves a left side triangle, two rectangles, and a right side triangle. Then tier two goes back this way, and it actually is just composed of three rectangles. And all you really do for entrelock is you just keep alternating, tier one, tier two, tier one, tier two, um, back and forth, all the way to whatever length you want. When you're about ready to cast off, you end after doing one more repeat of a tier one, and then you do the end triangles, which essentially is the reverse of the base triangles. Um, and this, like I said, it's it's a lot stretchier, so you want to make sure that your your other end is is just as stretchy when you cast on. Um, but so that's basically it. Those are kind of the components. Um, you can definitely see a wrong side. So in this pattern, you do a lot of um, picking up stitches. So it sort of makes this edge. Um, before blocking, this edge is obviously a lot bumpier and this front ends up being kind of a lot bumpier too. Like these kind of, I should have taken a picture before I blocked it, but, but after blocking, I mean, obviously it's gonna depend on the yarn that you use. Um, but I mean, this is very much, especially in Reno silk, a very um, drapey flat fabric. Um, so, you know, if it's something that is blockable, that's more ideal because then it will definitely flatten out um, and be a lot more square. Because sometimes the edges, um, because you're sort of creating these triangles here, it looks a little funnier in my sample because I actually changed yarns. If you're using the same yarn, these ends will be a lot cleaner. Um, it's just because I kind of cut the yarn and, and did some knots there. But, um, but yeah, blocking definitely kind of creates a much better kind of square or rectangle shape as you as you go along with the scarf. Um, okay, so those are the components. I am going to get my needles and my yarn um, and we will start knitting this so I can show you how it goes. Okay, so the first step in the pattern um, is to cast on 30 stitches loosely. I already did that, um, figured you didn't really wanna see me casting on stitches. Um, I use the long tail cast on method. Um, you could use your cast on of choice, especially if it's one that's a little bit stretchier than long tail. Um, but I did try to, you know, I didn't pull too hard after I cast on every stitch. So I have a little bit of, a little bit of stretch there. Um, so if we're following along, we're first going to create the base triangles. Now, something you should know about entrelock is that you end up turning a lot back and forth. I'm in kind of an awkward position right now to be able to even do this camera setup to be able to show you so um, I might be making it look a lot more awkward than it is um, if you've never done short rows before that's perfectly fine um, you're not doing anything that's a typical short row like a wrap and turn or a German short row you're literally just going back and forth on the needle um, 
So don't get too kind of stressed about that. If you follow along and just turn your needles when it says to turn, you will be a-okay. Um, in this section, uh, I make sure to note that when you slip, you're slipping purlwise with the yarn in back. Um, you don't ever really want to kind of have to move your, your yarn too much. Um, so row one, base triangles, and note that this is the right side row. So I'm keeping the yarn in back, slipping purlwise, knitting one, and then turning. So you just get it, you just turn like that, your left, right needle becomes your left needle, your left needle becomes your right needle, and you're going to purl two. So on the wrong side, you're pretty much always purling, which is what makes the, the front look all pretty stuck in it like that. And then you turn. Then slip one again, purlwise with yarn and back, and knit two. Two and turn. I'm sorry I'm not more zoomed in than this, but this is the best I can do. Uh, and then you're gonna purl three and turn. So you're just kind of purling back those stitches that you just knit on. So essentially you're kind of creating that triangle because you're not knitting the whole entire thing. So you're starting to kind of knit on a slant to create that triangle. Uh, slip one, knit three. Oh, sorry, slip one with yarn in back. That way, like the yarn is already at back because you're about to knit. So as you start to do this, you're going to see that th there starts to be some space here. So you're kind of going to keep connecting the pieces. So slip one, knit three, turn. And again, the yarn is already in front for you. Purl four. And then I'm going to keep going until the first triangle is done and kind of... Okay, right now I am on the purl side of row 16 where you purl 9. So I'm going to just show you that. Um, one thing to note too, the reason that you're slipping that first stitch, um, so what you're, I'm essentially creating right now is this first triangle. Um, you, you're, you're slipping this edge right here. And the reason you do that is because you're going to be picking up stitches to make this triangle or picking up these stitches to make this rectangle. So by slip stitching the edge, it makes it super easy to kind of know what stitch to, to pick up. Um, and especially by slipping it with the yarn in the, in the certain direction makes it, makes it really easy. So just to kind of let you know that. Okay. So we're finishing up row 16, which is purl nine. And turn. Okay, so row 17 is slip purlize with yarn in back, knit nine, And then at nine. Okay, so now essentially we've just made, if you were to turn it this way, our first triangle. So on row 17, it says slip one, knit nine, do not turn. And then repeat rows one through 17 two more times. So you've just already created one triangle. So now you're essentially going to be redoing what we just did from row one to create um, a new triangle. So again, with yarn in back, slip one, knit one, turn. And so now it's just row two just says purl two, right? So you're just purling two. So you're not doing anything to touch this triangle that's already on the needles. Now you're just kind of working a new one and turn. Slip one, knit one, knit two, turn and purl three. One, two, three, turn. Next row, slip one, knit one, knit two, knit three, turn. And you're purling, woo, sorry, you're purling four. One, two, three. Four. So again, you can kind of see where there's all of the space. So you're really only working these stitches right here and 
you know, creating a triangle from the remaining stitches and you're not even touching this anymore. So just know that when you're turning, you're not always going back to the end. You're just kind of working a certain set of stitches um, in the middle. And you'll find that kind of throughout the whole pattern um, that you're, you know, for like in the sample, when you work this rectangle, you're just going to be going back and forth on this rectangle for a while. And you kind of ignore the stitches that you've done on both sides. Um, so you'll see as you go. I just want to make sure like you're not nervous that you have all of these stitches still left on your ne left needle. You don't have to worry about those anymore for now anyway. <laughs> okay, slip, paralyze with yarn and back, knit one, knit two, knit three, knit four. And again, just follow the directions. Don't worry about the fact that you're just knitting the number that it says, it's okay that there's still some that you haven't finished on your other needle. Pearl one, pearl two, pearl three, pearl four, pearl five. And you keep going. So I'm going to keep going until I get to uh, row 17 again. I promise that this beginning is kind of the most awkward because my needle's in the way and okay so again I am on row 16 which is purl 9 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay and then you turn and then row 17, slip pearlwise with yarn and back, knit nine, do not turn. Knit one, knit two, knit three, knit four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you grab the ninth one and do not turn. So now we have the second triangle. Now it looks funny, obviously, on here because it's, you're sort of creating these triangles here. So it's, it, it looks funny like on the cord right now. So if you see this weirdness and you think you're doing something wrong, you're not, you're fine. Um, like I said, you're gonna be picking up stitches here for the rectangle, picking up stitches here for, for this triangle. So no stresses. All right, so now we are repeating row one through 17 one more time. Now, again, if you had maybe cast on 40 stitches instead, you would be repeating this an, another time. Um, and again, like I chose to do a 10 stitch kind of triangle or a 10, 10 stitch, 10 row rectangle. Um, you can do different ones. You can make them eight stitches. You could make them 15 stitches if you want them bigger. Um, obviously the pattern's gonna be a little bit different if that's the case, um, cause you're just gonna kind of be going back and forth more times to be able to have the right number of stitches in the square. So again, this is just based upon 30 stitch with DK, but know that you can do other sizes. Um, if you can't find patterns like that on Ravelry, let me know and I can try to attempt to help modify um, mine for you to make it work. Um, all right, so I'm gonna do the last triangle and be right back. Okay, now I am on, um, row 17 of the last triangle. I'm just trying to look at the directions. So note that it says, where it says repeat rows one through 17 two more times, turning work to wrong side once base tri once the third base triangle is complete. So all that means, so for row 17, we slip, paralyze with the yarn and back, and then we're gonna knit nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So where normally we weren't turning because we were doing another triangle, now we have to turn because now we're actually gonna be doing the next tier. Um, and so right now I'm gonna switch colors just so I can show you the maroon section next. Um, so I will be right back. Okay, so we've just finished the base triangles. Um, I just tied on a new color just so you can um, see the difference as we go through this in, in what's now this tier one. Um, so we are starting with tier one left side triangle. Um, in this whole section, because we're working for the most part on the on the wrong side, when we slip, we're gonna slip pearlwise with the yarn in front. That way the yarn is already in place for us to purl, um, which is kind of the, the easiest way to do this. 
So tier one, left side triangle, the directions say row one, wrong side, uh, slip one, again, pearlwise with yarn in front, and then turn. So slip pearlwise, pearl one. Now it's awkward because it might add on yarn, but and turn. Okay, and then row two. So we're actually creating a triangle, so we're adding another stitch. So we're knit front and back of this stitch, and then we knit the end stitch, and we turn. So now, like you can see, because I did it in a different color, you can see that we've already created three stitches of this new triangle. So row three now is slip one, pearlwise with yarn in front again, purl one, and then we're going to purl two together. So what we're essentially doing is, I don't even know if you can see the color on here, but so we're joining this maroon one to the gray one. So we're kind of connecting back while well, we're on this side, but so we're connecting these two triangles together by doing this. So purl two together and turn. So now it says for row four, so for the, for the right side rows all the way across, you knit until two remains. So in this case, we're just gonna knit one because then we have two stitches left on the needle and you're always gonna knit front back, knit one on those last two stitches. So knit front back, knit one. So now we are on row five. So slip pearlwise with yarn in front. We are gonna purl one, two, and then purl these two together and turn and then again knit until two stitches remain so this is one two and then on the last two stitches we are going to knit front back and then knit and then turn and then now we're on row what row seven so slip with yarn in front purl one, purl two, purl three. And so again, you can see that there's space here between these two stitches. So we're kind of joining again what we created and what the old stitch was. So we're purling those two together to kind of close that gap and turn. Okay, so I'm gonna finish doing that until we get to the last row. Okay, so I'm finishing up row 15. But I wanted to remind you again, remember how I said, um, you know, we've been just turning and going back and forth and connecting this triangle to the new triangle we're creating. So remember that in entrelock, like you don't go all the way to the end of the row. You just kind of go back and forth, like in all of these sections. So I just wanted to remind you again, when it says turn, turn, and don't worry about any stitches remaining on the needle. Um, so what did I say? I'm on row 15 right now. So I'm going to purl two together and turn so you can see how those two pieces are now connecting and kind of forming this bottom left corner right here so knit until we get to the last two stitches and then knit front back and knit now we are on row 17, slip pearlwise with yarn in front, purl one, two, three, four, five, six, sorry my yarn's tight here, seven, eight, and then purl two together and it says do not turn this time so we purl two together so now you can see we have two four six eight ten stitches so again when i was talking about casting on 30 and each of these kind of being in like chunks of 10 um so that's kind of how it continues so if you were to have done something where you did these as like 15 then obviously you would go back and forth more times until you had 15 stitches on the needle okay so that is the left side triangle I'm just turning just to show you. Um, so now we are going to do one of these rectangles. So we're, I'll flip this over because we're kind of working it this way, essentially. So we just did this. So we have these two things joined right now. 
Now what we need to do is pick up stitches along this end of this triangle and we're going to knit this square. And as we go up here, we're going to kind of be, by purl two together, we're going to be joining each of these ends to this triangle right here. Um, so tier one rectangle. Again, we are slipping purlwise with yarn in front every time. So now it says pick up and purl 10 stitches along edge of triangle and then turn. So what I was talking to you about before, I hope you can, let me see if I can bring this really close to the camera. Um, you can kind of see, let me get my needle better. If you've crocheted before or picked up stitches, you can see these, this little V stitch. So in every slip stitch on every row, there's this little V stitch. So it's like these two loops that make a V. So that's actually where we are picking up. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seven, eight. Sometimes you have to do 10. You have to go in a little bit farther into the, the triangle, but it's easy to see on this because it is different colors. Um, all right, so we are picking up and purling. So I don't use my left needle when I pick up. I just put my right needle right into the stitch and then and then either purl or knit depending upon what we're doing. So I'm gonna put my needle purl wise, so kind of from back to front um, through this stitch and then purl. So I've picked up one stitch. So now I'm gonna find this next V stitch right here, go from back to front, just wrap my yarn around and purl. Again from back to front, purl. Now there are probably other videos on YouTube for picking up stitches. So if you feel like this is not ideal, definitely please feel free to check other videos out. So what have I done so far? So two, four, six, eight, ten. So I've picked up one, two, three, four, five. Six. Seven. The first one's always a little funny because you're it was the base triangle, so like the slip stitches weren't as is easy. Eight, nine. Just count again to make sure. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And we picked up two, four, six, eight, nine. And then I'm just gonna kind of do. See how like this piece right there is is kind of stretched. Again, because I did such a loose cast on, it's not a super obvious stitch. And in some ways, picking up doesn't really matter, but. Okay, so now I have 10 stitches picked up, and then it says turn. So we're gonna turn to the right side here. So you can see now how when we picked up all of those stitches, we kind of are now connecting, well, we're on the right side now, but we're connecting this piece right here. Okay, so then it says knit 10 and turn. So we're gonna knit one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and now it says turn again. So we're gonna turn. So now we're really just creating the rectangle on these stitches. We're not gonna worry about the triangle over here that we already created. Where we are right now is is here. So like I said, we're just going to go back and forth and be connecting to these two to, to, to this side. So row three on the tier one rectangle says slip one, purl eight, purl two together and turn. So again, we're slipping purlwise with the yarn in front. We're going to purl one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, and so then see how it says purl two together? So the next two stitches is a maroon one, which is one of the new ones that we have, and then one of the taupe ones. So this is where I was saying you're actually connecting it to this triangle. So your purl two together will always kind of be your last stitch over here, purled with a stitch that's on something on your left over here. So we'll purl two together turn and then four through 20 is just repeat rows two and three so you're always going to be for this tier one rectangle you're always going to be just knitting 10 across so 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you can start to see if I flip this back over that now we're really kind of creating the start of this triangle right here. So we knit 10 and we turn, and then you always slip the first stitch. For this case, purl wise with yarn in front, we're gonna purl eight because we are repeating row three now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and again, the last stitch you do is purl two. So there's a big gap, so you're kind of, if you can see, you're closing the gap between this stitch and the first stitch over here. Purl two together to close that gap. And then you turn, and again, you knit 10 across. So I'm gonna continue on this until I get to row 21. Um, I'm going to shut the shades so this isn't so sunny, um, and I will be right back. Okay, so I just finished row 19 where I slipped purl eyes, purled eight, and purled two together. So I'm now turning to do row 20, which is the final set of knit across for this rectangle. So I'm knitting 10 stitches. Really, it's two that I am not knitting slow enough for you to really see what I'm doing. So, <laughs> again, apologies. I'm not a typical tutorial video person. Um, okay, and then we turn, and now we're doing row 21. So it says slip, again, with yarn in front, purl-wise. We're going to purl eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then again, we're only left with one gray stitch for this one triangle. So it's going to say purl two together, like we have been doing, but then it says do not turn. So we've completed one rectangle. So if I go this way, we've now done this. A little hard to tell on the needles again when you get up higher it's better like the first tier is a little tough because you're connecting to these triangles but when you're just connecting rectangles later on it gets a lot easier so we've just finished this triangle so now what we're going to do again is pick up along this triangle and knit this rectangle connecting it to this triangle just like we did right here so so it says row 21 we just did slip one purl eight purl two together do not turn one tier one tier one rectangle complete Repeat rows one through 21 one more time, and you have two tier one rectangles. So row one again is picking up and purling along this slip stitch kind of chain edge that you see. So from back to front, purl one, purl, pick up two, purl, pick up three, so I just kind of try and find this little V stitch right here, if you can see. And so my needle goes under it that way, so you can see kind of the two stitches up there. Purl pick up four. Whoops. Purl pick up five. Sorry, I'm all kind of twisted here. I'll pick up six, seven, eight, nine, and then the tenth one. Sorry, why is this all? I'm going to kind of do in this sort of open spot right there. Just kind of find two of those threads. 10. And turn. Okay. Again, I promise the upper tiers get a little easier because you don't have to deal with these triangles here. I don't know why. Okay. So now we are, we just did row one of our second tier one rectangle, which is pick up and 
purl along 10 stitches end of triangle and now we're on row two which is knit 10 and turn so we knit one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and again where we are right now if i go back to the front side we've completed these two triangles we've completed this rectangle which is hanging out right here and now we just picked up this edge and we're going this way and connecting it to this triangle here okay so now we turn slip one with yarn in front curl eight now right now i'm on row three of tier one rectangle the second time through pearl 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 and then again we purl two together which is the last maroon stitch with sort of where there's this gap to connect to the triangle now when we're doing tier one again later up here we're, we're going to be connecting to the to the rectangles Purl two together and turn and you do it again so repeat rows two and three again until you get to 21 and that's what I'm going to do and I will get right back to you. Okay, so again, I just finished row 19, which is slip one purl wise with yarn in front, purl eight and purl two together. And then I'm going to turn and row 20 is knit across. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Turn, and then 21 again is slip, pearlize with yarn in front, pearl eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the very last purl two together. Again, connects your rectangle to your triangle in this case. So again, like I said, next time you do tier one, you'll be connecting rectangles. So now, and you still do not turn. So now we essentially have done all the way up to here. So now the next piece is the right side triangle. So we just kind of need to fill in this little diagonal space right here. So the directions for tier one right side triangle. So pick up and purl 10 stitches along next edge and then turn. Um, so again, you kind of see all of these little V stitches from when we slipped the stitches when we were creating these base triangles. So we're doing the same thing, picking up and purling. So I go under the two stitches, whoops, purl. Under those two from back to front in this case because we're purling three so if you wanted to actually like pick up you could put that stitch on your left needle and then purl into it um, sometimes I just find it's easier just to kind of find it with my fingers and just put this needle straight through and wrap it around um, again you can find definitely find videos online somewhere I'm sure on YouTube for picking up stitches um, that's just the way I'm more comfortable because I feel like I can more easily find the hole if I'm like holding it with my hands. Um, so how many did we do? One, uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. We picked up two, four, six. So seven, eight, nine. So the ninth one's obvious. The tenth one, we're just going to kind of stick right along the bottom over here so it makes like a really good um, kind of corner stitch without getting our end caught okay and then turn so now you can kind of see how we're, it's starting to, to look like the sample right here so again now we're just creating this rectangle uh, triangle triangle right now okay so we're on tier one right side triangle this time we are Okay, so one note on this one. So because we're creating a triangle, um, in this case, we're actually going to slip on both sides because we're going to slip so that this makes a nice pretty slip stitch edge up here. 
and then we're also going to slip over here so that when we get ready to do the tier one rectangle we have an easy piece to pick up so when we're on the right side we are going to slip with the yarn in back because we're going to be ready to knit but then later on when we're on this side and we slip the first stitch we're going to slip with yarn in front because we're going to be ready to purl um, so again, I have that in the directions, just want to kind of, you know, it's, it actually it just makes it easier. So it's kind of what's already sort of natural in this case. Okay, so we're on row two, um, slip one with yarn in back, knit nine, and then turn. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine so again you can kind of tell how we're not really doing anything with this rectangle because we're just creating a triangle right here so we slipped knit nine and now we're turning now row three says slip with yarn in front so again the yarn's already in front so all you're doing is slipping purl wise and purl seven one two three four five six Seven. and now we're left with two at the end and we're purling those two together so all we're really doing is kind of creating this corner so like every time we get to the end of here we're purling these two together and that's kind of making that straight edge if we didn't do that it would make a rectangle like you'd end up having a rectangle that was going out to here and we don't want that so that's kind of what's making the the triangle all right so now we are on row four slip purlize keep the yarn in back which it already is and we're going to knit eight one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And again, that kind of feels natural because it's, it's, there's a big gap between this old rectangle and, and this. So it's kind of natural to just sort of finish the end of this little row and turn. So now we are on row five. Slip one yarn in front because we're going to purl anyway. And we are purling six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Again, which makes sense because we're just purling until we have two left on this needle and purling those together to make that corner. Put two together. Um, all right, I'm going to keep going and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm just finishing uh, row 14, which is slip with yarn and back, uh, knit three and turn. So now I'm on row 14, slip with yarn in front, purl one, purl two together, turn, row 16, slip with yarn and back, knit two, turn and 17 slip one with yarn in front purl two together turn and then row 18 slip with yarn in back knit one oops turn and then row 19 is just purl these last two together and turn so now you'll see in the directions at purl 19 it says slip remaining stitch back on right hand needle and now the right tier triangle is complete so so essentially you slip that back on your right needle and what we're going to start to do for tier two is actually pick up a knit along here so now if you look compared to the sample right here so we just did this triangle which is this triangle right here um, and we already have one stitch essentially kind of picked up in essence so now we are going to be picking up nine stitches along the triangle that we just made to go this way and do three rectangles um, so i am going to stop for a minute join on the blue yarn and we will get ready to do tier two rectangles okay if you all are still with me now we are getting ready to do tier two rectangles which are super easy because you don't have to worry too much about 
increasing stitches, you're just sort of joining to the, to the rectangles that are already there. Um, so I just tied on blue. Obviously you wouldn't be doing that, you would just be continuing with the yarn that you have, so just kind of ignore my little tails. So tier two rectangles, so when we slip, in this case, because we're sort of starting on the right side, when we slip, the yarn's already gonna be in back because we're going to be knitting, so you will be slipping pearlized as always, but you will have the yarn in back for this section. So row one, right side, pick up and knit nine stitches. So again, you already kind of have one stitch on there. And same thing as before, I'm just kind of finding where these little V stitches, oops, where these little V stitches are on the edge. Okay, so just put my needle right under that V stitch, kind of like you're crocheting. Um, so picking up uh, sorry, it's a little awkward with the blue here. Okay, so we're picking up one. Again, I'm just kind of under that, these little V's, if you can see them. Two, three, Four. And really doing it this way with the slip stitches is the best way to like not make holes. Sometimes when you pick up stitches, there can be like a big like gap in these areas. So by doing kind of the slip stitch and then being going under both of these stitches of the little, the, both legs sort of of the little V um, is just good to not have holes. It just comes out a lot cleaner that way. All right, so we had one and we're picking up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're picking up nine. So there's eight. And then the ninth, if you can, it's easy to see here because it's a different color, but there's kind of this little last stitch right there. And again, the closer you get to here, the less likely there kind of is to be a gap at this join. So this is kind of the spot we're in right now is joining this blue right here to this piece. Um, it's never gonna be perfect. That's kind of the joy of it all. All right, so now we should have 10 stitches on here. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, so row one, right side, pick up and knit nine stitches, which we did, and turn. And then the wrong side, which is row two, is just purl 10. So every single time for this, for the tier two rectangles, we're just gonna purl across the 10 stitches. So it's super easy. You don't have to slip anything. You don't really have to count too much. You're just purling across. and turn okay so now row three again we are on tier two rectangles row three slip one and in this case we're doing with yarn and back because we're going to be knitting so we slip pearl wise keep the yarn and back um, knit eight so one two three four i feel like i'm on sesame street counting five Five thunder bolts of lightning. Um, two, four, okay. Eight, and then again, so now since we're joining this rectangle to this rectangle, you're gonna see that there's always gonna be a gap. So where before we were on the other side, we were purling two together to kind of join. Now we're on the right side. So we're going to do a slip slip knit. So you kind of slip the last stitch of the, of the pickups that you were just creating along with the first stitch of the rectangle that's still over there. So slip, slip, knit, and turn. Same, now we're just gonna repeat rows two and three. So the wrong side again is always just gonna be purl 10. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, turn, Slip with yarn, whoops, slip with yarn in back. And we're going to knit eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And again, so we're now we're kind of there's this big gap, so we're gonna slip slip knit 
these two together. Slip, slip, knit, knit. Turn, so again, you're not worrying about what's left over here because you're gonna join it later and you're still not worrying about everything that's over here. We're just focused on this spot right here right now. So, okay, I'm going to continue on doing um, repeating rows two and three, which gets us all the way to row 21. So I'm gonna do that right now and I will be right back. Okay, now I'm about to start um, row 19. So you can see I only have um, two little red stitches kind of left on, on this rectangle. So slip pearlized with yarn and back, knit eight, Five, six, seven, eight, slip, slip, knit. So we're picking up one of those two left on the other rectangle. Turn. Now, of course, you have to be careful when you turn. You don't want sort of this one to fall off your, your needle there. And purl 10. Okay, and now turn. Now we are on row 21 of our first tier one rectangle. So again, slip, pearlize with yarn and back, and we're gonna knit eight, and we're gonna slip, slip, knit again. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, slip, slip, knit. And now on this last one, so we're, we're connected all of the stitches to this rectangle, right? So this is where we are right now. We just finished this rectangle and we, by all of our slip slip knits kind of made this join right here. So this time we're not gonna turn. Um, now we are going to pick up and knit 10 stitches down here. So where before we picked up and knit nine on this triangle, cause we already had one on our needle to make this, but now we're gonna pick up all 10 along this rectangle and then do the same thing all over again of rows two through 21 to create this rectangle. Then when that rectangle is done, we're gonna not turn on the last row 21, pick up and knit 10 stitches here and do rows one through 21 again. Um, and then we're gonna start tier one over. Um, so I am going to continue on and do these two rectangles. I'll pick back up when I um, am finishing my third rectangle. Okay, so now I have finished the second and third tier two rectangles. Um, so you can see what we have now. So we have the three base triangles, we have the tier one left triangle, the tier one rectangles, and the tier one right triangle. And then we did the three tier two rectangles. Um, so now essentially all that you do is go back and forth with tier one and tier two. And remember when we did tier one the first time and we were picking up stitches, um, it was a little awkward because we were picking up kind of along the side of the triangle and the cast on. Um, but when you do tier one this time, it's a lot kind of easier to, to pick up those stitches along the, along the rectangle. There's, you know, 10 stitches that are very obvious because you've done, you know, a good solid um, 10 kind of pattern repeats on this rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead um, and do tier one just one time and then I will show you how to end and do the three end triangles. Um, but again, if you're working on a project right now, all you really want to do from this point on is alternate tier one and tier two as many times as you want until you get to the length um, of the project that you want. So I imagine you won't really need the directions for the end triangles just yet if you're working on something and you're entrelocking along, um, but I'm going to finish this set of tier one now on this project, and then I will walk you through doing the end triangles, which is very simple and quick as well. So, okay, so now I have finished my second set um, of tier one. So again, if you were creating a full project, you would just keep alternating between tier one and tier two, and you would finish uh, on a tier one before you start the end triangles. 
So now I'm following the directions in the pattern for N triangles. Again, I just kind of tacked on this teal yarn to have a different color. Um, so row one on the right side says pick up and knit nine stitches because remember you have this one stitch left after you finish the tier one right triangle that you move to the right needle. So you only have to pick up nine stitches because you already have one on your needle. So I will pick up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, and then turn, and then you just purl 10 across. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and turn. So again, we are doing, we're working on this triangle right now. Row three says slip slip knit, knit seven and slip slip knit again, because you're essentially kind of closing off this corner at the same time that you're connecting to this tier one rectangle right there. Oops, tails out of the way. Okay, so we start with a slip, slip, knit, and we knit seven, one, And again, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now you'll see there's one teal stitch from when we just picked up, and we're gonna slip slip knit it with the first stitch in this rectangle. So slip, oops, slip knit, and turn. And then row four says purl nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and turn. Now we slip slip knit again. Slip, slip, knit, and knit six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now again, we slip, slip, knit to close this gap like we've been doing all along. Slip, slip, knit, and turn, and purl eight. And we are just going to keep going like this. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, now I'm up to uh, row 16, which is slip, slip, knit, knit one, slip, slip, knit, and then turn, purl all three, one, two, three, turn, You'd be good at turning by now. Okay, so now row 18 is just three slip slip knits. So you slip slip knit, you do the slip slip knit to join these two, and then you actually slip slip knit these last two in the rectangle. And turn, Row 19 is just purl three. Okay, turn. And then row 20, you slip one knitwise with yarn and back, slip, slip, knit. And then you pass that first slip stitch over. So you have one stitch left on the needle. And we have now created our first top triangle right there. 
So now it says, uh, do not do not turn. So you finished one end triangle and you have one stitch on the right hand needle. So now you essentially pretty much do the same thing. So now with the right side facing, you are going to, you already have one, you're going to pick up nine stitches along here and do the same thing. Repeat row in 20. Row, sorry, rows two through 20. Then you're going to have one stitch left again. You're going to pick up nine stitches along here, complete row two through 20, and you will be done. So I will come back and show you that when I get there. Okay, so I just finished the third end triangle and I did the slip uh yeah slip 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 knit and pass slip stitch over so you just have one stitch left on there um and then cut your yarn and pull through the loop and you are done um so you can see how the difference in my two swatches um so like i said at the start of this obviously like it does block out really nice depending upon the yarn that you have but so this is essentially how kind of bumpy it looks when you're done um, and I think some people had mentioned that too, that they didn't necessarily like how the wrong side looked because obviously it's really kind of bumpy and waffly. But again, depending upon the yarn you choose, you really don't um, see the ridges very much um, when it's flat. It just has like a little bit of, of raise to it, but it's so much, I don't even know if you can really see the, <laughs> the difference in the <laughs> dimension of these two. Um, but blocking definitely works wonders. And like I said, like the ends are a little bit you know bumpy and straight um you know in the area where you just cast off has some you know where you did all of the kind of joints for the ends of the triangles um so you know being able to to block it out really nice with um blocking pins and, and make everything as square as possible um works wonders um okay so that is it for my crazy tutorial thank you everyone for hanging in with me. This is definitely not something I'm used to doing. I don't have a camera set up to make it work or lighting or any of that good stuff. So um, hope that this was at least a little bit helpful. Um, definitely follow along with the pattern that I have um, and reach out if you have any questions. Um, and now I guess back to regularly scheduled programming. Thanks everybody. Okay, welcome back to the present. <laughs> Um, I hope you all enjoyed my Entrelac video, um, and yeah, let me know if you have any questions. I'm super excited, so start to cast on, and let me know how you're doing, and use the hashtags, um, and I'm excited. I'm really excited. I know some people have expressed interest, so I really hope you all have fun um, doing this. Okay, so what have I done? I have, I was going to say four. <laughs> four, kind of actually five finished objects. <laughs> the first two um, were the Fahrenheit 113 scars, which is my own design, which someone had custom ordered for me. Um, and remember I was doing them kind of two at a time. Um, ended up finishing those. I kind of focused off the last podcast and got those finished um, and sent those off to the girl that ordered them for me. So I will post um, a couple pictures just to kind of show you the finished objects. Um, but I don't have those to show, so those are gone. But other than that, I have three um, finished objects to show you right now. The first one is woven. It's funny, my knitting friends were kind of teasing me uh, at the last uh, knit night that we had because I'm, you know, how obsessed I've been with weaving. But I do like feel guilty not getting more knitting done because there's so many patterns I need to finish and want to start. Um, so I've been kind of trying to slow down a little bit with weaving. This one I think was on the loom when I did my last podcast and then I'm one more on the loom, um, right now, which I'll talk to you about in a little bit. Um, but I kind of haven't, I've really been focused on the finishing the projects that you'll see. Anyway, so this is using the one I showed you last week was blue moon fiber arts in the farmhouse colorway, um, which was that rainbow that I like color blocked. This one I did similarly, but it's very different colorway. So it doesn't have like the same crazy effect that the rainbow one did. This is also Blue Moon Fiber Arts. I think it's um, socks that rock medium weight, not the lightweight. So it's like sport. Um, and it was a exclusive color from Eat Sleep Knit last year, oh, maybe this year, maybe this year. Anyway, um, so this is the end. So I did cross this with a solid 
purple color. Um, so it starts like that. It goes into like a gray section, it goes back to like a plummy purple and almost black purple again, dark gray again. And then I actually have like a pretty teal blue on the end, like this teal blue. Um, so it's cool. So it's kind of fun that the fringes are sort of different colors. Um, and you can tell it's so different than the, than the rainbow. Um, but it's cool. So, um, yeah, like I said, I definitely want to make more of these. I really like how this looks. Um, I was talking to some yarn dyers who, um, dye their yarn this way or want to dye their yarn this way because it really has a, a really cool feature. So, um, anyway, so that one is finished. Then I think one of my other works in progress that I showed you last week, um, and this is blocked, but I grabbed it. And of course, my weave, my weaves, my yarn, my ends aren't woven in, um, but it is blocked. So this is the Azalea shawl, um, which uses the tacky tandem yarn. Um, so that's it. Super cool. Very basic triangle scarf with this little yarn over spine, um, little garter bumps, um, and then a pico edge. Um, I mean, it's a pretty good size. And it comes down to my waist even when I'm sitting, and it still has really good tails, so it's a good size. I ended up, the pattern calls for only three balls of this. Um, my friend Bonnie had done one, and she used five, so I bought five. Um, I have maybe half a ball left. Um, I used four for the body and then pretty much started the bind off for the fifth. Um, the, you know, as I got toward the last balls, like it, there was like this much that one ball would actually do in the scarf. Cause there's so many, so many stitches on this by the end. Um, so I didn't really want to run out. So I just kind of started the bind off with the fifth ball and have a little bit left, which is actually kind of fun because it's an interesting yarn. So I may at some point try and weave with it and make kind of like a, kind of like a scrappy scarf, but one that has like different weights of yarn in it. Um, someday, not soon, but, um, anyway, I'm pretty sure this pattern's free. I think I said that last time and I never checked. Um, but I can recommend it. It's definitely nice and this yarn is kind of fun to to work with for something different um yeah so finished objects azalea shawl um, so the next finished object that i want to show you i'm super excited about so i mentioned last week that i was doing a test knit uh, and the test knit is for the uh rhinebeck is my favorite season shawl um, from christy of yarn cafe creations and the girls in the yarn cafe podcast um, so I was super excited to be able to test this, test knit this for her. And I did it in three of her newer colorways in her autumn Halloween horror collection. Um, so Christy and I kind of FaceTimed and we looked through all the different colors and kind of picked three, um, to, to make the sample with. Um, and she ended up making a, a second version of her sample too, and did it in three different colors from the same collection. And they look really cool too. So it's a really neat pattern to kind of pick three, you know, it's not designed to be a fade, like they should have a decent amount of contrast. Um, and it doesn't end up using, she's still kind of figuring out all of the final yardage. Um, but around like 200, 225 yards of each color. Um, so it's actually kind of neat that if you have some leftovers from different projects, or you maybe have some 50 gram skeins or something, um, it's a great project for that. Um, anyway, so here it is. So fun, super cool. And I, so this is her biscotti base, which is 8515. And it's funny because, you know, I like, I've been talking about 8020 like crazy because I weave with it and it's so soft. Um, but this is 8515 and it's so luxurious. I think it having the nylon still gives it a little bit more texture but yet it's really soft and drapey. I love it. Um, anyway, so this is a asymmetrical shawl where you kind of start a little with the tail. So it's designed as like a sampler shawl. So each colored section that you see is different, um, has increases and decreases on the edges, but then it's just kind of different textures. The purple sections, at least in this shawl, um, are more lacy. And then some of the other ones are just kind of 
plays on different knits and pearls. I mean, really, if you know how to do a knit and a pearl and a yarn over and an increase and decrease, you can do this. Um, so it ends up being a really, really good size. Christy and I were actually talking about how it's so interesting because she and I, you know, we were kind of making ours at the same time um, and um, use the same needle size, both claim to be tight knitters, like that's the way we describe ourselves, and ours came out a different size and used a different amount of yarn. So it's just so funny how that works. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it's a really good size here. You get the fun tails that you can either wrap around or knot or tuck or however you want to do it. It just has such nice, such nice drape. It's so smushy. Um, anyway, I love it. Like I was super excited about these colors. And then as I started making it, and actually this is the lights showing surprisingly, like blues and purples are so hard to get on camera. Um, but this is showing them really, really well. So let me tell you what these colors are. So the, let me grab them. So the blue is her American Werewolf in London. So that's this. The dark blue, this one, is American Werewolf in London. The middle blue, the light blue, is called The Ring. We talked a lot, too, about scary movies. I'm so not. I, I like suspenseful, thriller kinds of sh movies, but, like, horror, scary ones I'm not a big fan of. Um, and then the beautiful purple is called Let the Right One In. Why? Why am I not focusing? I think my thing's... Pause. I want to see. I think I did something to my... Oh, no. It's on auto. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, well. Trust me. Let the right one in is what it's called. <laughs> um, so, anyway. So, thank you to Christy for letting me test knit this for you. It is gorgeous. I definitely recommend this to anyone. It is coming out on August 1st. And it is part of the uh, decked out for Rhinebeck knit along that the Girls in the Yarn Cafe and Kay the Crazy Sock Lady are doing for a knit along. Um, so if you want to get in on that, look at how pretty that pattern is. I was telling Christy I want like a whole wrap in that pattern. It's so pretty. <coughs> anyway, I can't stop <laughs> playing with it. Um, anyway, so I worked a ton on this. Oh my God, my hair. Um, does anyone else have crazy, like uncontrollable hair? Like I'm happy that I, these are all like natural curls, but they're like uncontrollable. Um, so yeah, this, I mean, I worked on this like crazy. Um, I'll do a little bit of chatter at the end and tell you kind of what's been going on with me, but um, but yeah, I traveled a little bit with my husband, so I had time to work on this in the car and had some time to myself on our little getaway. So, um, I knit like crazy on this, but I absolutely love it. So Rhinebeck is my favorite season coming out on August 1st, Christy Houghton of Yarn Cafe Creations and Girls in the Yarn Cafe podcast. Um, and I think I got some subscribers that found their way here from that podcast too. So Hello to all of you. Thank you for joining me. Um, okay, that is everything that I've done. Um, now, in terms of what I'm doing, I only really have one whip that I'm kind of really working on. Um, if you remember, I was like I said, I was doing those Fahrenheit 113 scarfs. The blanket for my friends, which I'm still going to pretend I will somehow get finished in the fall. Um, and... And then just kind of other random whips that I wanted to finish. That was kind of in my sweater. My comfort fade card is still kind of hanging out there. I do want to get back to that one. Um, but anyway, this is a new cast on that you haven't seen. I'm kind of now wanting to be in more like worsted DK weight mode. Um, so this scarf is called the Cosido and it's by Quenna Lee. And it was in the Malabrigo Heritage uh, ebook that one of my patterns was a part of. Um, so definitely go check that collection of patterns out on Ravelry. I think it's way cheaper to buy the entire ebook than even like three or four patterns. And I think there's a bunch included in there. Um, and I love the scarf. Um, I love Malabrigo yarn anyway. So the fact that every pattern uses it when I have 
almost every base of Malabrigo in my stash in some form or another. Um, but this one uses two skeins of Rios um, in two different colors. So um, this one, um, I don't have the name of it, but this was a, oh, I guess spoiler alert. So for people who um, are Eat Sleep Knit members, I haven't been, I know last year, like I was crazy about like getting a lot of projects done and getting points and trying to get as far in the Yarnathon as I could this year. The weaving just took over and I don't really care as much about the Yarnathon this year, but I did make it to a certain level where they send you a free skein of yarn. Um, so this year it was this. So this is an exclusive um, colorway. It's a lot more like teal, a lot more teal in there. Anyway, so this one I just recently got and then this one, oh yeah, this is way more Healy turquoise than that's showing but anyway um so I had this one in my stash and this exact color is in this variegation um so anyway so I decided to do the pattern with this um when it, the, the pattern itself is made in two variegated colors of Rios that are you know comparable or similar um not too um contrasty uh, but I thought it would kind of be fun to try the pattern with a solid and a variegated and I'm going to make another one of these at some point for sure. So it's a really, really cool pattern. Um, so you can see it has these like slip stitch. Um, it's kind of hard to tell on camera. Um, but these little like slip stitch areas um, that kind of pull yarn up. Um, I don't even know what that technique is called. But where you just kind of have yarn hanging in front and then you knit it up further up in a different stitch so you kind of do this you know you're altering like four rows with the solid four rows with the variegated four rows with the solid um and it's really nice i'm already i always use my wingspan to measure because i'm like just over five feet um i think i'm like five three and three quarters and every time i go to the doctors i'm like you sure you sure i haven't grown a quarter of an inch since last time um it's okay embrace my I don't even really consider myself short. Average? What's an average woman's height? Probably 5'4", right? Anyway. Um, so yeah, so it's about half my wingspan right now, and I still have a pretty decent amount of yarn. I had actually started this and frogged it when my, my knitting friends were here for knit night. Uh, not last week, but the week before. Um, and the ends, so there's a few stitches on this, and they were like, it was like a double seed stitch or something and it was like too like I had to think about it too much when I got when at the beginning and end um so that was kind of bothering me and I also so I'm using size nines and I don't know if it called for nines and I initially used eights just because that's what I had on hand or if I thought it used eights whatever I started it with eights and I just started to get worried that it was going to be too tight of a fabric and I was going to run out of yarn quicker, which doesn't really make sense when you, a bigger size needle uses more yarn. But I think because I knit tight and it was so compact, I was just worried that I wouldn't get as much length. Um, so anyway, so I frogged the whole thing. Well, I mean, I was maybe, I maybe had this much done, frogged all of that, um, went up a needle size and I'm happy. Like I said, I'm surprised I am halfway through and I still have all this yarn. And I know Rios blocks um, will stretch a lot when when blocked. Um, so yeah, so I'm pretty excited about it. And it's super easy. Like this will definitely be my new commuting project. Um, and if I watch TV in bed and stuff, I'll grab this. Um, it's rolling in a little bit, but I think it'll block flat fine. Sorry, you can't really see the pattern that well. The colors, it's so hard to show blue. Um, but it's really cool. But so check out the pattern anyway, Cosido. Um, it'll be on my projects page. Um, and like I said, I will most likely be making another one of these in more colors. I have the uh, variegated Lotus colorway, which is super pretty, and a bunch of blues. I'm all about blues. It's so crazy. Um, okay, and then the only thing I'll really be doing next is my Entrelac. So like I said, I'm using Feederbrook Farms. So this, I don't remember the... I don't have the labels easily accessible. Um, but this is also Feederbrook Farms. So you can see all the like the hand spun color. And this is the same 
colorway. So theirs, they, you know, they use the same base colors, but when they spin it, you know, like you can tell at the outside of this, it's pretty much two of the same color, close to two of the same colors that are spun. Um, so sometimes there are solid sections depending upon which part of the yarn spun with which part of the yarn. Um, but what's nice about that too is Entrelac, you don't, because you have so much color kind of going in lots of different directions, if it's a little bit different, it's okay. Um, I'll have to be careful when I add a second skein to make sure that I'm not kind of ending in a weird spot that it's going to create too much of the same color. Um, but usually I don't really, I don't mind too much with, with this yarn and Entrelac. Um, so yeah, so I'm super excited. I, this, like I said, I bought this colorway at um, Rhinebeck last year. Um, so it's kind of fun to get to use it now because I will probably buy two more skeins of a new colorway at Rhinebeck this year. Um, so anyway, so that's my next. I am using, um, which if I've talked about, if you watched my Entrelac video that future me recorded, um, I'm using my size seven um, signature needles. So I had first used signature needles. I think I bought the double points to do, no, not double points. Maybe I did. No, so just the small single points to do cozy memory scrappy blanket. Um, that was the first time I ever tried them. And then I bought, I think they were having a sale, either free shipping or 10% off or something like a while ago. And I know I've shown this on a previous podcast, so I'm sorry if you already know this. Um, but I bought a pair of sevens in like a smaller size, just because I do a lot of scarves and sevens. Like I like DK and worsted, so seven is kind of like a common needle size for me um so I just got kind of a shorter one so I can go back and forth and then I bought longer um size fours for kind of fingering weight shawls and things like that um anyway so I'm using a size seven these are my signatures um and using the my recipe pattern <sighs> okay that is basically all I'm doing in terms of what I've got, I did want to show you, so my friend Caitlin, who comes over for Knit Night, um, occasionally, like, the women in my knit group will buy, like, if we're buying something, we'll buy, like, a little something or other for each other. Um, she made a purchase. If you watch Kay the Crazy Sock Lady, I think she's shown a lot of these bags before in the past. So this is from uh, Random Fandom Bags, and it's the super cute, like, tea bag um, notions pouch. Um, so Caitlin gave one to me, Helen, and Bonnie, which was super sweet. Um, so I just wanted to kind of show this off. Um, and it's actually good because the biggest notions pouch I have is my scrappy thread one, which I take everywhere with me. Um, but it is nice to have kind of a second one. And I'm, you know, getting a lot more of like duplicates of things. So I have a lot of progress keepers and stitch markers and um, have a bunch of darning needles. So that's what I have in here as a needle, stitch markers, progress keepers, um, a key for my Knitter's Pride interchangeables to make sure I keep them tight, which is important. Um, and then I think I need to get, I want to get like another pair of small scissors and like a small tape measure, I think, to put in here because I don't have doubles of those. Um, but yeah, just wanted to kind of show that. Thank you to Caitlin. Um, then I only have a little bit of yarn to show. So I had ordered um, Amber of Maker's Haven. Um, she kind of stopped doing yarn full time, um, but occasionally she's been kind of posting stuff up on her website um, if she just has some time to dye kind of here and there. Um, so she put a few things up there and this was like significantly on sale and I just kind of couldn't resist. So this is her fancy sock base, which is 80% superwash merino and 20% silk two ply 400 yards and the colorway is take me to the sea um so it's really pretty kind of cream light pinks blues has some kind of darker blues and darker pinks um again i don't really i don't know what it'll be but i just kind of couldn't resist sale on merino silk yarn um then i ordered some self-striping yarn from freckled whimsy um i've followed her for a really long time, really like her yarn, um, and I just kind of fell in love with these colors. So this is 80-20, 80% uh, 20% nylon, 2 ply, 400 yards. Um, I don't know. I, I'm thinking about weaving with it. Um, I don't know. I'm still, that's like the, like self-striping on 
a loom is kind of my next, like, hmm, what, wonder what it's going to do kind of thing. Um, but anyway, let me put it up close. The colors are super pretty. It's just all these really different blues and pinks and purples, which is like what I'm about lately. Like I used to be like, oh, I just like neutrals and maroons and browns and I'm all about <laughs> pastel -y colors now. What's happened to me? I said, I was laughing, getting back to, um, um, the shawl I did for Christy. So you do, you know, cut the yarn after each color change. And as I cut them, well, I would like cut them, knit up a little bit and then go back and kind of knot. Then I was weaving in all my ends, like as I went. So normally what I do, I will weave the majority of my end in before I block and, but leave like a little bit of a tail. Um, that way when you do block and it stretches it out a little bit, like at least most of the yarn is already woven in and you can just kind of trim a little bit of the tail, um, rather than kind of blocking it, having a big tail that's already sort of blocked and having to weave that in. And, and sometimes it's, I don't know, for whatever reason, I, I weave in, leave a little bit of a tail and then block it. So I was weaving in as I went, which is crazy. And I don't even know why. Like, I, like I said, I have stuff finished that I haven't woven the ends in on. And this was probably, and it wasn't even like, I was like, oh, you better do it now. Cause there's going to be a lot. Like it wasn't even intentional. Like I just kind of started doing it. And then it was awesome. Cause then as I was working on it, I was super proud of myself. Like, wow, I wove those ends in already. So I don't know, maybe I'll, and then, you know, next project I do that has a lot of color changes. Maybe I'll surprise myself and continue to weave as I go. Sometimes it's nice, like, if you first pick up your knitting to just kind of start that way. I don't know. Again, who am I? Um, okay. So that's it in terms of kind of what I'm doing and what I got and all that. I think I do want to take a minute and just tell you a little bit of, like, what I've been up to. Um, I don't do tons of kind of chatter. Sometimes I just sort of mix it into whatever I'm talking about because my brain goes a million places. Um but I'm totally open to kind of talking about my life and stuff. And I feel like I don't do that enough. And I know some people just kind of enjoy getting to know podcasters. So I just thought I would take a few minutes at the end and just kind of tell you what I've been up to. Um, I think after, I'm trying to remember when I podcast last time, but later that week, I think I went to um, my nieces. So I have three teenage nieces. Oh, um, it wasn't even meaning to tell you this, but I'll jump in. So I get a I think a Snapchat photo from my oldest niece who's 18 and off to college in the fall. And it's just a picture of me like on her television. And if you remember from a couple episodes, episodes ago, I said that I, I totally called them out because they watch all of these strangers on YouTube that they're obsessed with, but they don't watch me. So she sends me this picture of me on the TV. So she started watching my podcast. So she's been like commenting on the videos and she's the one that I had made my very first pair of socks in acrylic yarn way back when that gave a hole in the toe within like a day of her of her wearing it so she was all excited that her her foot was famous on youtube um anyway total aside but but yay <laughs> my oldest niece is actually watching my podcast Woo! if you make it all the way to episode 30 hi um anyway so they're super into music and love going to concerts and and stuff like that so we went and saw uh charlie puth in concert uh, and Haley Steinfeld, if you know who she is, she opened up for him. Um, so we were down at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut, which is where he performed. Uh, so I went with my sister, my oldest niece, and two of my niece's friends. And it was really good. Like he, I've seen him before. He actually graduated from Berkeley College of Music, which is where I work, um, my day job. Um, and it's been interesting kind of seeing him kind of get better at performing. He was actually a piano major. Like he wasn't a voice his instrument wasn't voice, it was piano. Um, and so it's, just, you know, or like performance, like I forget what his degree, I think his degree's in songwriting. I don't think he was a performance major. So it's been kind of just interesting to see him evolve as a musician. Um, and he played a lot of piano and even had like a, I don't know what you call it, but like a piano that looks like a guitar. So that was kind of cool to just see him kind of, I don't know, rock out on his little guitar piano thing. Um, but anyway, it was a fun show. Um, then after that, so I've said before on multiple episodes that I have celiac disease, um, and two of my nieces also have it. And then my brother-in-law, their father, um, eats that way kind of for, I don't know if he's been diagnosed, but for like his own health reasons, he just kind of chooses to eat a gluten-free diet. 
Um, so the past however many years, they've been having a gluten-free expo. Um, and it's actually a national thing. They go to a bunch of different cities. Um, and so it's in near us. It's in Worcester, which is kind of halfway in between where my sister and her family live and where we live. Um, and it's not like it's our favorite day of the year because you, you know, it's all of these booths, everything's gluten-free, you have samples to try, they give you coupons and little samples to bring home. Um, you can buy stuff like a lot cheaper than what it would cost in the grocery store because they're just kind of trying to get, you know, get you exposed to, to all the, pro the products that they have. So it's crazy. I mean, you get there at like 10 o'clock in the morning. We stay there for probably two, two and a half hours going around to all the booths, but you're eating anything from like a piece of pizza to a cookie to a cracker and popcorn and pasta and then back to ice cream and then like and it's 10 o'clock in the morning and you're eating like all of this crazy food um but it's so good and it's so nice to kind of find new products and sometimes some local like restaurants and bakeries and stuff will go so it's interesting to kind of find um new places in your community that that sells gluten-free stuff so um it's a, an adventure every year and it was super fun again this year so that was that was good i don't if i have a picture of like all the the, the haul that uh we take home i will i will show you um i still have so many coupons too i had coupons for like free boxes of pasta and all of this good stuff so um anyway so that was fun and then my husband and i Oh, before that, and my two of my nieces, so I have an 18-year-old niece and then two twin 16-year-old nieces. Um, they were both in a musical, um, Susical the musical, um, in like a local theater group. Um, so we went and saw that, and they're so good. Like my husband and I don't have kids of our own, and I just adore my nieces. Um, and then my husband's sister has a niece and a nephew too. So it's been, I don't know, it's just awesome to be, if any of you out there like by choice sort of don't have your own kids and know what it's like to just kind of have nieces and nephews that you're super close to um it's just awesome to kind of watch what they do and i'm super proud of them as if they're my own kids um so just and i've seen them perform in a bunch of things before um but it, it's it's still amazing and it still kind of chokes me up every time so anyway so we went to that so that was fun and there was like a lot of little kids in it and they were really cute um you know, local community theater is always a joy. Um, anyway, so then, so that was the weekend of like 19th, 20th ish. And then my husband and I took a road trip and went to Turning Stone Resort and Casino in New York. Um, we had found that resort like years ago, um, when one of my friends from graduate school got married out near Syracuse and we just kind of found that place and stayed there. And every year since then, my husband's been going back for golf trips with his friends, like a bunch of them, like 12, 15, 20, depending on the year, go out there every summer. Um, and my husband kind of goes out there a couple times too, like 4th of July weekend. And it's about three and a half, four hours ish from where we are and a pretty easy drive, like right along the turnpike. Anyway, so I haven't been back in however many years since we went the first time. He just kind of, it's sort of his thing, but he, you know, thought that it would be fun for the two of us to go. So it was nice. We got a really nice suite that actually had like a deck um, and a hot tub on the deck. Granted, it was so muggy and hot out, but it was still kind of nice to to enjoy a hot tub out, outside on a deck, which was fun. Um, and we did play golf. My husband's a super avid golfer and I have clubs and know how to play, but it's the kind of thing where I would have to play regularly to get any better than what I am right now. And I always just kind of want him to go with his friends and have fun and not have to like play with me because I'm challenging to play with um so we don't go that often so it was actually kind of fun to be out there on the course and I didn't do too shabby for really probably not having played in five years um and I think we, we went to the driving range once over the past couple of weeks so that I could at least have swung a club before going out there um it's a crazy sport anyway so that was fun um now we've been back home kind of back to work um, next week, going to Foxwoods Casino in Connecticut for a couple days. Uh, every year, me and my husband, my sister and her husband, my dad and his girlfriend, um, we kind of go to Foxwoods just sort of, you know, we kind of decided a while back, like, not to buy Christmas presents for each other and that we would just kind of, um, you know, go to Foxwoods together uh, every summer. So we would kind of do that overnight. We, you know, gamble, go out to eat, sometimes have played bowling. Um, and then the guys golf in the morning, um, 
the women have got pedicures, manicures on occasion. I think we actually should probably book that if we're going to do that. Um, so just a nice kind of couple days away and enjoying some family time. So that is coming up next week. Um, my youngest niece's birthday, my husband's sister's daughter is going to be five. I think she's going to be five. So she's having a birthday party. So that will be fun. Um, and my anniversary is coming up. August 6th will be my 14 year wedding anniversary. Um, no idea how we're going to celebrate. We don't, we don't do much. Like we're the kinds of couple, we're the kind of couple that like, and especially cause we don't have kids. So it's sort of like, if we want to go out to eat, we'll go out to eat. If we want to buy something for the house or for ourselves, we'll do that. So, you know, we're not big like gift givers or people that celebrate anniversaries and Valentine's day. Like we just kind of every day is whatever, you know, we just kind of enjoy every day. So I don't know that we'll really do anything next year. I think for 15, we'll, we'll go away somewhere probably, but, um, anyway, that's enough chit chat <laughs> for right now. Um, I'm going to see how my Entrelox sample is blocking so that I can record that video for you, which you would have already seen by now. Um, not sure when I'll podcast next, but probably not too far away, hopefully a couple weeks. Um, as always, if you have any questions about anything, definitely reach out. I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, hope everyone's enjoying their summer. I can't believe it's almost August already. I feel like the summer flew by. Um, I know some parts of the country are really, really hot right now. Everyone in California, I hope you're okay in all of the fires. It's so scary. Like fire is, <laughs> fire and water are probably two very bad fears that I have. Like I don't go underwater. I don't really know how to swim and fire like, I don't even, I don't like lighting candles. I have a gas stove and it freaks me out every time I use it. Like they're just scary, scary things to me. Um, and clearly because they can cause lots of damage. So, um, anyway, hope everyone's doing okay. Um, everyone's having some knitting time. Um, I don't know until next time, I guess that is it. Keep on knitting and I'll talk to you soon. Bye everybody.